Every two seconds, someone's identity is stolen. Fraud is scary to think about, but important to understand. That's why the AARP Fraud Watch Network gives you access to important information, tools, and resources so you can outsmart con artists before they strike. Joining me now are Tia Murphy, an AARP Fraud Watch volunteer, and Chief Gary McNamara of the Fairfield Police Department. Thank you both for being Thank here. You. Thank you. Um, Tia, let's start with you. Why is this so important? Why are the elderly targeted, would you say? You know what? Older people tend to be much more uh, charming and open to phone calls and to people's plea for help. Mm -hmm. And these guys know that. They know exactly how to target in and manipulate people. So th the elderly get on the phone because for the most part for them it's, it's phone type fraud. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to get off. They want to just keep and they're aiming to please. And that's really what the problem is, more than anything. So is there a message that you tell seniors to be on the lookout for? You know what? One of the things that we tell people is if it sounds, if it's from a number that you don't know, mm -hmm. that you don't recognize, or from some organization that you haven't been a part of or don't want to be a part of, let it go. That's why God made voicemail and made answering machines. Let it go yeah. there. Um, if they get on the phone and they get with somebody and they're trying to solicit a lot of information from somebody mm -hmm. and trying to tell you something about, let's say, your tax return has not been filed properly or... You need uh, to be skeptical social, about that the, stuff. Anytime somebody starts asking you what's your date of birth, what's your social security number, what's your bank number, can you get this information for us? Be suspicious because that, that is not the way somebody should be starting a conversation with you. Makes sense. All right, Chief, what are the, the most common forms of financial scams that you're seeing? Well, you know, it's a crime of the mind, mm -hmm. and, you know, the Ch Chiefs of Police Association in Connecticut recognizes that, so we are teaming with AARP. But I think the ones we're seeing right now are the official ones. I'm scaring you into believing that if you don't do something, Very the true. police will come arrest you. The IRS will put a lien on your house. Mm -hmm. Something official, and that, that scares people. It sure. can scare not only elderly, but others. So the official scams that are coming out um, are, are really hitting hard right now. The IRS we've had, we'll, we'll see those again. Uh, the other ones that are common, will always be common, are family members in trouble. And they're secret. Don't tell anybody. Remember, it's a crime of the mind. So if I can get the elderly to believe this mm -hmm. out of fear, authority, or opportunity, and I can keep it a secret. If you don't keep it a secret, it's ruined. Yeah. They they kind of are successful in leaning them into believing that this is actually true. Really taking advantage of good nature there. Oh, they are. I mean, seniors are very trusting. They have a nest egg. They believe people. Mm -hmm. They want to help. They're fearful that if they make the wrong decision and share it with people, they may be um, limited. Uh, neighbors or friends or relatives might limit what they can do for fear that right. now they're going to waste some money. So sure. it's a really complicated situation that these scammers really know and play really hard into. Well, fortunately, Tia, AARP has a website uh, we do. full of information. We do. Uh, and we're looking at it right now, but uh, I was scrolling through it this morning. I mean, you have stories on there. You have what to look for. Tell us some of the details. Well, uh, you know, the, it's a new program. You get to it through AARP.org. Fraud Watch Network, and the one thing I do want to say is that this this is uh, something. It's a resource for everybody. It is not just for AARP uh, members. Anyone can take advantage of this. Um, it it will tell you by state what kind of frauds are happening. So if you let's say have a grandparent in New York State and they're telling you about some scams that are happening, you can go and you can check that out. There's a phone number there that you can call and talk to somebody live who can help you step through some things. And and one of the things that the, I want to reiterate what the chief was saying. People want to keep it secret because nobody wants to admit that they've been defrauded. It's scammed, right? Right? It's, it's very embarrassing. embarrassing. Very embarrassing. But the thing is, the more you talk about it, the more it gets out in the open. It takes some of the sting out of it. And then you're sharing that information with other people. So you're helping to help them not get scammed. That makes sense. Uh, and Chief, what are some of the other ways uh, people can avoid falling victim? Well, I think what you have to do is, is understand that they are working at this as a job full time. Yes. People are out there every day doing mm -hmm. this and trying to collect victims. And they do it in such a way that once they have the victim believing this to be true, mm -hmm. it's very hard to stop that process. One of the things that we've seen is the scam of grandparent scams, mm -hmm. where someone will call up and say, I'm locked in prison in Mexico or I need help, don't tell anybody. And then once the scammer gets them to believe it, 
the point of theft does not occur at the person's house. They have to go to a place to wire money. Ah, so I what see. we're trying to do is send the message to any business, stop and shop, supermarkets that have the capability to wire money, they have to be trained in what to look for in the signs of an individual basically going to send money to a scammer. Got it. We've been pretty successful in doing that where clerks have called us and said, listen, I think someone's being victimized. We were able to stop some of them. But, you know, it, it's very complicated. Uh, relatives have to be made aware of it. They have to talk to people and really understand it. We have to break the cycle. Once they have the, the seniors, mm -hmm. it's hard for any of the good people to break them of that. So we've got to kind of put limits in there that they can reach out to police, relatives, sure. or someone else to and try and break If it. you think you are being scammed, what is the first thing you should do? Is it contact the police department? Well, we're inundated with these you calls, are. which is a good thing, mm -hmm. but they're limited with how we can resolve them. Most of them are over overseas and difficult to, yeah. to find people. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is we're giving people the power to hang up, and oftentimes seniors don't believe they have that power. Mm -hmm. you, ha you have the right to just disengage. The IRS, the police are not going to come in, out of the blue and arrest you for something that you just heard about on a telephone call. Mm -hmm. We have to send that message to disengage with this conversation. The longer it goes on, the longer the senior really starts to believe it. Disengage, go to the AARP website, mm -hmm. go to your local police department, file a report, or call somebody to say, am I being scammed before you, know, just you ask kind a of question, yeah, too, exactly, right? Yeah. Um, and Tia, how do people get help from AARP? You could sign up on the website. You can sign up on the website, and, and let me be clear here. Mm -hmm. It can be anybody. You don't have to be 50 plus. You don't have to be an AARP member, and it is for free. Very good. So that those are wonderful things. Um, you can sign up on the website. You can get the latest scams delivered to to your to your. So you're aware of it, right? So that you're you aware of it. You can um, you get all the trackings and warnings from different law enforcement. We have something that's called the Con Artist Playbook. And let me let me glom onto something that the chief was saying here. One of the things that we talk about is getting under the ether. And if you think about it, ether is an anesthetic, right? It makes you go unconscious. What these people are trying to do is make you go unconscious from your rational mind mm -hmm. into an emotional mind. And like the chief mm -hmm. is saying, they're pushing all those little buttons. There you go. So that's what we have to be aware of. The information was up on your screen. And chief, we know you were involved in an accident about three yes. weeks ago. Yes. We covered it over on the news. But I'm um, happy to see you here. Yes, happy to thank you. You're doing you. well? I'm doing better uh, day by day, yes, yes. Very good. Thank you for asking. All right, and thank you both for being here.